Good morning, everyone, and it is wonderful to see so many people here and the sun shining. I mean, how often do you get people in one room and the sun shining in our new post-COVID world? Um, thank you, uh, Dan and Ian. Um, I think everyone agree that these guys have really built a kind of differentiated kind of event. Um, they try to bring together the best of thought leadership with the best of connection and engagement. And they kind of know what people want from these type of events to be inspired, but also to spend some time with each other out in the sunshine, have a drink and chat about the industry and network, right? So make sure you make the most of it. Um, those of you that don't know me, I'm Paul Frampton Calero. Um, I'm the president of a marketing consultancy called Control vs. Exposed. Um, you'll hear a little bit more about us in the next 48 hours because we've got a big announcement. But more importantly, I'm here today to be your host and to thread together uh, the various presentations uh, that you'll hear today. Um, and as Dan said, we start off on one of the big topics, uh, Metaverse. So I'm just going to do a few housekeeping things, and then I'll give a little bit of a state of the nation uh, from my perspective about what's happening in our wonderful industry, and then we'll jump into the content. So um, first up, um, please do make sure that you use the app. So if you go into the app, uh, there is a little button on the front home page that allows you to ask questions. It takes you straight into Slido. You don't need to register. Once you're in the app, it pre-registers you, and you can ask questions in there. We're not going to put roaming mics out there because uh, it tends to slow down the pace of the content. Um, so if you've got a question, please put it in Slido. For those of you that aren't willing to put your hands up, it's a little kind of easier as well. Um, and please do make sure that you think about your questions while the presentations are running because I will put it on and kind of ask those questions to the presenters as we move forward. So today, the main stage is brought to you by uh, Kantar Marketplace. Uh, so Kantar Marketplace has a couple of sessions over the next couple of days that will be bringing to life what they do. Um, and we're just going to play a very short VT um, that will explain a little bit more about them, and then I'll be back. So run VT, please. <laughs> Okay, well, up here, the, the stage was like rever reverberating a little bit. Um, it, I wasn't here last year because I had a date with the White Isle and it felt a little bit like there was some good bass up here. So hopefully later, everyone will be on the dance floor um, with the DJs. So amazingly, there are 10,000 people that registered for this event over the next three days. So there are a lot of people here, um, I guess, in classic kind of advertising marketing style, people didn't want to miss out. Um, so you're going you're gonna to bump into a lot of old friends, colleagues, um, and you're probably going to kind of find kind of interesting kind of conversations uh, kind of that emerge from nowhere. Um, so I'd encourage you to make sure you move around the whole of the, uh, the actual environment. This is one stage, there are a couple of others, and then there are lots of picnic tables in between. So MadFest is bigger and better than it's ever been. Um, and I think our industry, um, whilst it has some challenges, is in really good shape. Um, we've clearly got some rather big macro trends that are affecting not just us, but business in, uh, in general. Uh, it's looking like inflation will be at 10% by the end of the year. We're hovering around 7 or 8%. So that's clearly kind of affecting cost of living and affecting how people are willing to kind of consume, how people travel, how people eat, how people consume the products that we sell has changed dramatically. So the theme for this conference is really thinking about how to be bold. So Dan called it out, no guts, no glory. No guts, no glory. And I think what that really manifests itself in is it's not the fastest, it's not the smartest, as Charles Darwin said. It's the people that adapt the most quick, quickly that actually succeed. And never before have we had as many kind of bullets or tsunamis coming at us. We've got the inflation piece. We've got the realities of Brexit. Many of the clients that most of you will work for or serve have got product issues, whether that's chips or kind of supply chain issues. Those things are holding their business back. Yet, there are still brands that are growing very quickly. So some brands are really recognizing what it is they need to do to actually be brave and kind of adapt in this new world. So what is that? What is that from my perspective? So I would say it's a couple of things. 
it is that their marketing teams have a real mandate for change, down from the board table, and they're leading from the front. Marketing is at the front of the conversations around how the business grows, the role that marketing plays in the purpose of the organization, but also in how it moves into technology, into e-commerce, into data. Secondly, it's because they're making bold transformation decisions. They're not just sitting back and waiting for the market. They are actually leaning in. And there are brands here today like Burberry, Diageo, KFC, Domino's, Heineken, all of whom you'll see have actually adopted that same mindset, many of whom have adopted an agile mindset. Agile, we often use as this adjective that we should be agile. It doesn't just mean fast. It means how you kind of create a flatter layer across your organization, how you cross-functionally connect people and actually get them to move faster and seize advantage using data and insight. So you'll see that come out as a theme uh, again and again from some of the presentations. And the role that marketing plays as a positive force for change will also come out of the Diageo presentation today. Many of you were probably in Cannes, and that was a big theme in Cannes, um, where people were talking about the need for marketing to be a sustainable driver of business going forward. Of course, yeah, there's lots of parties and yachts, but the underbelly of the conversation was very much about sustainability and long-term purpose for brands. And I would also say that brands that are winning are doing a few other things. They're innovating. Uh, they're testing, and they have built a culture that actually accepts failure. Um, and we often talk about that, fail fast, but how many businesses actually genuinely really do it? They're also being creative. Now, in a world about data and technology, and there's a lot of different vendors out there that sell different versions of machine learning and data and first-party data, creativity is still at the core of everything we do. And you can be creative with data, you can be creative with advertising, but it does require us to really think about how we turn up and how we actually build kind of advertising and campaigns that actually really resonate with people. Because people aren't the same as they were two, three years ago. They don't accept lazy advertising. They want things to deliver to them, whether it's utility or value to their life. So now is a good time to kind of reframe ourselves and think about that as a reality for the brands and the consumers that we serve in this industry. And the last point, I guess, is very linked to that, which is the brands that are genuinely customer-centric and insight-led, that actually really listen to their customers and are able to narrow the gap between a customer insight and how the marketing team works and the decisions at the board are also the ones that win. And it's not just a D2C e-commerce business that's able to do that. Some of the biggest brands have been able to navigate that and actually been able to seize that opportunity too. So look out for that in some of the presentations. And I would also say that Outside of the brand and marketing world, I'm sure there are a lot of people here from agencies. Um, in fact, why don't, why don't we do a bit of a hands up? I'd love to understand who's in the audience. It's always useful for people. So who's here from a brand? Who's here from a marketer? Okay. I would say that's about a third, maybe a third, a quarter, a third to the people here. So that's great. How many people are here from an agency or a consultancy of some kind? Okay. So that's probably about a third to a half of people. How many people are here from a vendor? from an ad tech kind of publisher type of company. Okay, that's another quarter. How many people are here from somewhere else? Okay, we counted most people then. Um, so at least you know who's in the room. So on the service side of uh, the industry, I mean, I spent a lot of my years um, running the media group of Havas, and it was fierce, it was scary, but I think it's a lot scarier today in trying to keep up with what a service model should look like. Every single brand is looking at building their own capability and developing their technology to be more agile and to own more of what they do. That doesn't mean that every brand doesn't need an agency. It just need, means they need different types of partners that actually work in the way that a brand wants them to work. So that, that's a tall order, and it does require adaptivity in the same sense that it does for a marketeer. Um, I would also say that... Sometimes legacy ways of operating, whether that's a structure, an operating model, or a way of making money, or operating commercially, gets in the way of doing the right thing. And what this conference is all about is challenging some of those things, right? I think often we just go, actually, it's, nothing's really changing, we're all fine, just carry on. But 
the woods are burning around us, uh, the forests are burning around us, so it does require us to really think differently and to think about what it is we need to do to be relevant as a service player, as a brand to consumers, um, because if you don't keep up, I think we're all seeing more and more brands that are either shutting stores or having kind of profit warnings or whatever else, so that will only continue. So, today, expect to be inspired, um, expect to be challenged. Um, our industry needs all of us to adapt. It needs all of us to be part of the conversation um, if we really want it to flourish over the coming years. The figures are suggesting that advertising and marketing will continue to do well. But of course, if you think about business per se, in, in times of economic downturn and in times of inflation, marketing as, a, as an investment does often get squashed or does get reduced. Now, the brands that are actually finding ways to continue to invest through recessions have repeatedly shown to be the ones that win, but it's our role to actually make that happen um, in this room because we can affect that change. So I'd ask all of you to maybe, as you're listening, think about what it is you will take away from today or the next two days. What is it that you will take back to your own job, your own kind of work, and try and think about implementing, whether it's an idea, whether it's a way of working, whether it's some inspirational thought, because being here is a, is a luxury. We're all very fortunate to sit in a room and listen to people, but unless we take something back into the real world and, and do it in an action-orientated way, then the industry stays kind of stagnant. And if we're really kind of living up to the theme of this conference, being no guts, no glory, then we've all got to have a bit more guts. Okay. Well, that's my opening speech done. Um, so the first presentation today um, is a great uh, topic. I mean, it's one that I'm pretty sure creates um, kind of tribes of people that have different perspective, um, because as Dan alluded to, it's on the metaverse. Um, some people dismiss it entirely. Some, think, some people think it's the, the future of everything. Um, some people call it Web3. Um, some people call it just metaverse. Uh, one company renames their entire organization to commit entirely to that future. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just throw up a poll. If you just give me a second to navigate to the poll. We're going to throw up a poll, and we are going to vote um, for what you think uh, around Metaverse. Do you think it's a passing fad or a necessity? Um, and then we're going to bring Rachel uh, on stage from Burberry, who's going to share her thoughts on how Burberry have jumped into uh, Metaverse from a luxury market perspective. OK, so you can see if you're not in the app, you can use the uh, slider.com uh, URL there and the link, but if you're in the app, you shouldn't need to do that. You should be able to go straight in. Um, and in a second, hopefully, up on the stage, you'll see the poll live, guys, if you don't mind flowing up. There we go. So this is going to kind of update in real time, so we'll give it a minute or two for people to vote um, and to see what people think. So the good thing is only 3% of you have no clue what the metaverse is, which is probably a good start, given we're in the industry we're in. And we have a fairly even, even score so far. So almost half and half agree it's the future versus think it's all hype. Um, so I've seen much more kind of acute kind of versions of that before where only a few people think it's the future. So um, I think it's, it's exciting that we have so many people that actually believe that metaverse will change the way we work. And the more I talk, the more that gray line is subtracting, contracting, and getting smaller and smaller. Um, so, that is great, given um, our next speaker is going to talk all about the metaverse. So, without further ado, I am going to introduce Rachel Waller, um, who is the Global VP of Innovation at Burberry. Um, Burberry won't need any introduction to any of you. Um, Burberry has been very uh, progressive in terms of its thinking about metaverse, and a lot of the luxury brands have really started to kind of pioneer what they think uh, a brand should look like and feel like uh, in the metaverse. So we are very fortunate to have Rachel, not only because um, she's going to talk about the metaverse, but also because uh, she's eight weeks away from uh, giving birth to her second child. So um, on a hot day, coming to a busy conference, and she's also got an offsite uh, for, with her new CEO right now. So um, we are very, very lucky uh, for her to give her time over to us today. Hi. 